I get asked quite a bit about how do I design parts for 3D printing. So I thought I'd demonstrate on this simple part a bag clip that you use in the kitchen. And it's a, it's, I've tried a lot of different bag clips over the years. Uh, this is by far my favorite 3D printable bag clip so far. And my wife likes it. This is an example of a uh, commercially available bag clip. We're going to start off by measuring the sticks. We'll make those about 110 millimeters. We can make longer ones for longer bags, but let's just start with this. The width of it is about 12.25 millimeters. That's the diameter. This is the basic shape of the drawing we're going to make. It has a dowel in the middle, and then it has an outer uh, piece that keeps that dowel inside. The diameter of that inner dowel is 7.5 millimeters. The outside of this part is 12 millimeters. It's a square. There's an opening gap here about 5.25 millimeters. The area inside of here is 9 millimeters. That's the diameter. This end here is about 11 millimeters long and sticks out a little further to make it easier to get the bag on there. Export this as a PNG and we'll bring it into the drawing 3D drawing app, which is Shaper 3D. I'm going to import that in millimeters. I'm going to start in the top view. We're going to start with a 2D sketch of the part we're going to make. I'm going to make that 12 millimeter square. Then we'll make the circle that represents the diameter of our dowel. And that's the diameter, but we need to enter the radius. Next, we'll make the inside of the part, uh, the, the opening that the bag will slide through. And that is 9 millimeter diameter. So 4.5 millimeters is the, the radius. Now we're going to cut our opening out. So let's just first find the center of the area. It's marked by that purple dot there. And we don't want a circle. We want to use a line for this. And the size of that opening is 5.25 millimeters. So we'll just make a line here, 5.25 millimeters. And we'll move it into our reference point there. Now I'll just quickly sketched a couple lines that will be used to make that opening. And then let's clean up the drawing a little bit. So now we'll go back into a 3D view so we can extrude this. So we select it, extrude, and then we'll just type in the value we want. Uh, it's oh, that's um, 110 millimeters is the length of the of the outer part, but we have the 11 millimeters plus the 110, so 121 millimeters is what site that in our dowel is. So now we need just this little offset to hold the dowel and the uh, the outer piece together. We'll make that 4.25 millimeters, and then we'll extrude the outer uh, outer part and that will be the 110 millimeters. So there's our shape. There's a few more things we can do here. Um, we can make the top, the, the dowel part, we can make that maybe uh, put an angle on it. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that inside of Shaper here. Um, but one easy way to do is just we'll extrude a, a, a cube and then we'll set that at 30 degrees and then we'll just stick it right toward the edge end of that dowel and then we'll just subtract the two parts and then we'll have a, a 30 degree angle on the end of that. So there's our square. It's just a temporary shape for us. We'll extrude, extrude it. Size doesn't really matter, just needs to be bigger than the part we're going to uh, subtract. 
just kind of bring it up close to the part. Rotate our 30 degrees. Now we just move this part, the shape, up against the part that we want to subtract from. And about right there. Now we go to Tools, Subtract. Uh, we don't want to keep any of the parts. And say so done. And there we go. There's a 35 degree angle on the end of our dowel. All right, we want to chamfer this here so that we can, uh, so it'll be easier to slide it, you know, for the bag to slip around it. And then that doesn't need to be solid. What we can do is we can uh, make it hollow in there. And uh, so we'll just go into shell, select the face, and then this says the size of the shell that we want to use here. Well, 1.5 millimeters looks good to me. We'll just add a little color and make it somewhat transparent on this outer part so we can see through. Now we want to actually go in and um, chamfer and fill it um, some of the faces, some of the edges here. Keeping in mind kind of what will make it easier to fit the uh, bag on the part when we're, when we're using it. So here, it would be nice if we have this little angle here so that the bag naturally just kind of slides in there. And same thing on the inside here. We'll put a little, little easing in here. And the goal being to make the bag want to kind of naturally slide in there easier and not give it less uh, edges to hang on. And we'll round these edges here just to make it uh, look nicer. Round this a little more. This edge we could round, but the way I'm going to print it is uh, standing up on this side, so I'd like to leave as much surface here as possible. Um, it would probably look nice to round this part right here that we're looking at. Um, but to make printing easier, um, I'm not going to do that. So I'll leave it a, a hard edge, hard corner right there. And this is our part. Uh, we can export it and put it on the printer. I get the best results if I print standing up like this with an adhesion layer. And that's it. We went from just an idea to a 3D printed part, um, and here it is in action.